Oh. Uh, welcome back. Hello, hello. Hi, I'm John. Jacob. And this is the Heimer. Alright, we're back to it. Back here? Yep. We're uh, not in the camper once again. Yeah, as you can Just see. Still trying this out. Yeah, what do you think? Good audio? Visual? Can yeah. You see? Uh, Leave a comment. Yeah. We need to learn. Mm -hmm. We need to learn. Alright, what'd you bring for a drink? To Wait, this is not a drink. You know, I didn't bring a drink this time. Probably all of our friends upstairs will bring it. Yeah, we also have, we did bring some moisturizer. Moisturizer? Yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. yeah. All right, so we can do that. We can put that on our hands. And yeah. Yeah. I also have stuff for doing nails, just clear nail polish. And... Um, what other things? Does that, help? That, that helps strengthen your nails? Yeah, and it also keeps... I mean, you can see I've got them done. I don't know if that is showing. Got a the sheen to them. Yeah. yeah. Keeps, you know, possible fungus off a little bit more. Gives oh, them a little protection. Protective coating there. Yeah, sure, yeah. Just makes me look cool. No. no. Anyway. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> He's a, that's a no. <laughs> this is what John's reading, I guess. Uh, yeah. No way. Yeah. You guys have a little, I don't know, we're just doing show and tell now. Yep. Yeah. Somebody, uh, did you bring this to the file? Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just fun little things. All relating to our topic today. <laughs> yeah. Our topic about uh, legacies. Yeah. Maybe, that maybe, maybe leaving a legacy. Yeah. Isn't that pretty important? Is that important to you? Oddly, yes. I think it is. But why? I don't know. Does it matter that you leave a legacy? I think it does. It does? Yeah. I mean, if you leave no legacy, what was your whole point of existence then? I mean, that's it. To reproduce. I guess, yeah. So our children. Maybe our children legacy. are the legacy. Yeah. So I guess what is a legacy? Yeah. Well, just something that you remembered by, but for how long and what the right. scope is. I'm the sure. length, I think, is maybe the more important part. Yeah. Okay, I've got a quiz question for you. Sure. Putting you on the spot. Go. Your dad's dad's dad, so mm -hmm. your great grandpa mm -hmm. on your dad's lineage, what was his first name? I don't know. Yeah. So that lasted a couple of generations then. Your grandpa? Was His name lasted. Oh, yeah. Do sure. you know, most people know like their grandparents name, right? Sure, yeah. Even if they didn't meet them, mm -hmm. that, you know, if they passed before or something like that, most people. But maybe that's where the cutoff is, they don't know their great grandparents and beyond. I would say, yeah. Somewhere around there. Perhaps most people. There's definitely some out there that are more into um, their family tree. Yeah. Than maybe I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm sure we all have relatives that did neat things and, you know, felt like, you know, they were creating a legacy and they started businesses, they helped communities, they did good things. But invented certain things. Yeah. But then largely we don't even know about them a mm -hmm. lot of the time. So how can you make a legacy that really has a strong impact, say, let's not say thousands so of years. Strong, so strong impact. Yeah. Is that length of time? Is that amount of people um, affected by whatever actions you took? Yeah. What is a strong impact? Is it both? Is there a formula for that? Well, I'll use one of our props to talk about this briefly. Sure. Okay. That just worked out great. So I won't go into a huge thing, but Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great carried around with this huge army across all of Asia two books, the Odyssey and the Iliad, both by Homer. There weren't that many books back then. This is like 250 BCE or something. He carried around these books. Homer, the poet, had a strong legacy because he inspired, he did, it influenced lots of people in lots of ways, but he inspired one of the biggest conquests ever on earth with Alexander the Great. 
It opened up trade between China and India and Europe. It um, spread religions for the first time. Alexander was the first European, or his army was to see elephants, um, or Asian elephants anyway, when he went into India. It exposed spices and money and all sorts of things. So that, there's a strong legacy. That's, that is. I mean, both Homer and Alexander the Great. But you just needed to influence one person. Yes. Yes. And obviously Homer, what was, Homer was like 800 BCE or something like that. He, so he never met Alexander the Great. He came before him, but he wrote possibly one of the best stories ever written. And so it could, you wouldn't, if there's a high possibility, your legacy won't even be fulfilled until much later after your death. Yeah. That's like some of these, um, you know, artists and stuff. like Van Gogh was like that, right? Uh -huh. Never yeah. sold anything or had any popularity when he was alive. So he had no idea the day he died, he had no idea anybody cared at all about what he spent his life doing. I think that, um, that could possibly be the same story for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. like their popularity goes up after their death. Yeah. It's almost like, it's only then you start understanding about their lives and what it actually, their life actually meant and what it means to you now. Yeah. And then your art gets, and then you think of their art more highly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, what is your legacy going to be, John? <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just dumped that all on your lap there. <laughs> Short sentence, <laughs> but, yeah. I think my legacy is going to be helping people um, live a better life, but live as in actually living like in their space. So, like a house, helping them, and I, I'm hoping a large group of people um, understand more about their living situation because I think a lot of the times we're oblivious to how our current living situations could be affecting our productivity or just our happiness in general. Mm -hmm. And so my legacy I'm hoping is going to be to affect that. So how we design, I guess, our environments in order to better ourselves. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, that made me think a little bit of like how, what a craftsman you are, like, um, John's a woodworker, um, among other things, but like even that, that alone, I'm sort of taking a micro part of what you're talking about, I would think, but like the idea that you could build something very functional, whether it be a whole house or a piece of furniture or whatever, you can build something that lasts 10 or 20 generations, it could last 500 or 1,000 years mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I would love to put into motion other, like if other people could find inspiration, just like the Odyssey, in what I'm doing and uh, kind of multiply that effect. I think yeah. that's, I, I don't think my, <laughs> my initial effort is going to be enough. I think it's going to have to be very more um, inspirational. Uh -huh. It's going to be hard to accomplished changing somebody's current living like uh, houses are very um i guess cookie cutter now mm -hmm. i think people have come to expect certain things and yeah they, they kind of evolve over time but if you look back 100 years ago yeah maybe we have more open concept you know but that's about it yeah and yeah that helps with the flow of how people communicate with each other across the rooms you're not all just have to be scrunched in one room there's more space but um so that's that's a hundred years we, it took us to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping to kind of quicken the pace on that a bit, mm -hmm. but I think it's gonna it's gonna take a while. I mean, you would I'm sure you would like to have a legacy that's you know hundreds of years. I would. I mean, how many? I would, yeah. How, historically, how many people like Homer and Alexander the Great have had? legacies that have been lasting thousands of years like you know there'd be certain world leaders like julius caesar maybe or people like that cleopatra like early world leaders maybe you could say but like even even da vinci was only what 600 years ago or something like thousands of years that 
almost doesn't happen or hasn't happened yet. Thousands of years, yeah. Like, who was the lead architect in building the Great Pyramid of Giza, 5000 BCE? That guy should be known, probably. Like, whoever was figuring out all that science, of, you know, all that physics and math, I, right? I mean, that'd be one of the greatest builders to ever walk the earth, and I certainly don't know who. Especially just the, the, uh, the knowledge and resources at hand in order to do that. Sure. I mean, even nowadays, it's very hard to accomplish that. Yeah. But how do you... Well, I mean, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here, but, you know, maybe it's... How do I make sure my name is associated with Michael Legacy? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, not necessarily your name, but that your work, your passion continues. So, um, you know, and now I think a lot of people are hoping for the internet and you know, social media and YouTube and everything to carry that. The things that we're saying and doing on YouTube now, in theory, could be floating around still in a thousand years. And people could watch. Historians might be studying this stuff mm -hmm. and everything. So there's some level of legacy now that's way easier. You don't have to, you know, have to the, the people juggling tennis balls on. Yeah, well, I mean, what if both of our legacies ends up being the very, our very first episode of The Hanger? We said <laughs> something that said the chain of motion of events that was just, and then we go down. The Hanger, I guess, goes down in history. John and Jacob. Yeah. Right. Well, and it doesn't even have to be big. I mean, would you would you rather have like a huge following? This year, like say, say on this channel, for example, get a hundred thousand subscribers somehow in the next couple months, like something. Like if everybody that was watching this right now told ten people about this show, how great it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go yeah. On. Would you rather have a ton, or would you rather have something that lasted longer? Would you rather have this like? I know this is a podcast and this is not like our life's work or anything, but would you rather have like this show be something that just builds gradually so that in a hundred years or two hundred years it's quite strong way after our time on the planet? You know, would you rather peak early or have a slow? I think I'm like right now I'm fine with it being slow. Mm -hmm. and, and back to my name being associated with it, I'm not even sure I care that my name would be associated with it. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I did it, I don't know, I think it's more knowing that I did my best at influencing a better change mm -hmm. than anything. I think that's that would be my legacy. But there's probably something in us that's a little bit selfish where like before we die, we'd like to know that at least the trajectory is looking good. Like our ideas are. I would be fine with seeing, like, in terms of a garden, just seeing a little sprout coming out of the garden. Right. If I could see that before I died. Yeah. Then I would know. Okay, it's, there. There's a high probability that there will be a flower there. Yeah. 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 I, I would like to see that. Just the reassurance. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um, this may be obvious to say, but like, you're great at. Um, working with wood, but you know, it's interesting to me that your legacy, you may have no idea what that, like in 10 years you might be, you know, helping discover a cure for cancer or something and have some sort of legacy that you, you can't possibly foresee right now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, in a way that's very empowering. It's kind of neat to think about. Yeah, so yeah, that is. Um... I think as long as you're you're continuing to improve yourself, I think you, you, you have, there's so many more opportunities out there. Yeah. I think yeah. it's when you stop improving yourself is when perhaps uh, things will slow down for you. Mm -hmm. So what is, what's your legacy, Jacob? Well, I don't know that either. I mean, I'm, um, I'm not sure. I know that I've spent my life um, sort of advocating for peace and um, mostly that's been an education um, and I think that's what I want my legacy to be under that umbrella somehow going forward the rest of my life an advocate for peace 
I, I know that's a huge topic area, but um, you know, I've um, I've been interested in writing, so you know, it might be that um, uh, writing a really neat book, like we were just talking about the Odyssey, but I'd be writing um, things that are more topical about um, peace and ways to achieve peace in the world. Um, I've had some interest in um, political office, so. So are you, are you trying, are you um, expanding your audience here? Yeah. So yeah. you're a, a grade school teacher, and so you have a lot of influence over uh, children's minds on what peace should be and how they can integrate peace into their lives. But now, now you want to like, kind of grow beyond that. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit impatient. I mean, I'm older than you, mm -hmm. and I think I'm getting a little impatient with um, such a small scale. I, I just I, There's definitely value in that, lots of good value. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to teach peace to children. Um, but I'm feeling like just an urgency all of a sudden in my life. It's, it's kind of cool, actually. I have... Um, very clear vision going you, you on. You almost woke up from something. Yeah. yeah, and it's like I know, like I, you know, I may not succeed or I, um, you know, whatever, but I know at least the path that I really want to go in right now in my life. That is great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think just reaching a lot more people, and my ideas tend to be quite out there. <laughs> you know, like, so, like. Um, I, I think that, you know, um, I don't think they will be super well received by, like, the masses immediately, you know. Is that just because of people being set in their ways, or is it truly, like, life-shattering things? I don't th I think it's mostly people being set in their ways and a little bit of the, um, just the ages of our society. I mean, I think... Most of my ideas aren't actually that wildly crazy. It's just um, maybe they hadn't heard them before. Yeah, I think at least some people may reject change right away. They are yeah. comfortable. They don't want change. They can't. They think their lives are fine the way they are. Right. Right. Like you know, nationally, people don't want to like possibly rock the stock market. Generally, people make money in the stock market. They don't want anything wild disrupting that because they're thinking about retirement accounts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But um, I have, like I said, like an increasingly strong vision about like basically the, the key values I would care about for our society. And I don't pretend to think I'm right necessarily about all of it, but I... Um, that vision is strong for the first time. And so I guess ways to influence a lot more people and a, you know, a podcast could be one of those ways to reach yeah. a lot more people. But I think I'm kind of rambling here a little bit, but I think I might rather reach, I think you were saying this partly too, but I might rather reach say a hundred people really well than 10,000 people only lightly. Yeah, um, yeah, if you could really affect a hundred lives really well, that hundred lives can really, I mean, if they are inspired, they would want to continue on their whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever beliefs they've had now, and uh, that hundred very passionate people will uh, kind of spread. Yeah. You know. you know, back to my, can I um, talk about my books a little bit more? Yes. You know, this guy, I mean, a lot, actually a lot of those early abolitionists were considered a little bit fringe. You know, they were um, largely from the northeast part of the U.S. and they um, tended to be pretty well educated, but not all of them. And um, they were sort of talking about sort of a radical idea of just abruptly ending slavery because of the moral problem of slavery. And there were lots of people that said, just like they do now about social issues, they were saying, well, you can't do it right away. Like, it will it would crush the economy and be, there would be a big mess and where would everybody go? And, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of complicate. And these guys were just saying, forget it. We have to deal with all that. We need to end slavery right now. And so these kind of hardcore abolitionists were viewed as, I mean, he was... 
like I was telling you earlier, he was thrown in jail a number of times. And like he, he was kind of a hermit. Some people called him a hermit. Like he lived off in the woods and dug things out of the ground. And he was kind of weird in a lot of ways. Um, so what was his legacy then? Well, <laughs> um, I mean, he influenced um, Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi referenced Thoreau quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, particularly civil disobedience. So India, of course, got free of the English Empire by civil disobedience, nonviolent civil disobedience. And um, well, Martin Luther King studied and read almost everything of Gandhi's and influenced America and the whole world with his nonviolent actions too. And so now he was taught by um, Ralph Waldo Emerson was his teacher. So, you know, everybody learns things from other people. The chain's and there's a chain yeah. continuing there. But his legacy is strong. That's no small thing to influence Gandhi and Martin Luther King quite directly. Yeah. And of course, uh, lots of other people. He was friends with Lincoln. Maybe Jacob. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, like, I don't know, like, even on his deathbed, I mean, I think a lot of Americans knew him at that point. He was in the newspapers and stuff. But I don't know what they thought of him. I don't know. You know, was he just... There's probably still a lot of Americans that thought, like, you know, he was just way off to the side politically and had these wild ideas about... Um, he was wanting to end all wars and refused to pay taxes that went into the war chest and things like that, that I think a lot of people probably thought he was pretty cuckoo. Now, maybe some people still would today, but I don't. I think that like, he, he might still be ahead of where we're at right now, still. Yeah. So, In some cases, I would say so. That was kind of a, a, a ramble, but... Yeah. Um, I guess we can reel it back in. Uh, um, so, for you and your legacy, you... Um, You've already started your legacy within a, a small group of children. Maybe not so small. You've been teaching for 15 years now? Like 20. 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So, that, I mean, that's no small task. But um, have you seen any effect of your legacy? Oh, in little ways. I mean, I, you know, I hear back from former students and stuff. And I hear about neat things they're doing. And I feel like... The, and, um, you know, really peace sort of supporting ways. And, um, but, you know, I'm not totally, you know, it's not like I think that's because of me. I mean, children mm -hmm. are mostly influenced by their parents and there's a lot of great families and parents in, in our town. And, um, you know, but I, I tell myself, I'd like to think there was a little bit of an influence there that, you know, um, you know, I have college age, people coming to me occasionally, usually online and saying, you know, I remember when you taught the peace circle about yeah. this. And so, but I'm not sure the scope and breadth of that. Maybe it hasn't fully evolved yet. Yeah. I mean, these children, especially when you first started, are now going to grow up. They're almost at that point where they're going to start having families and uh, teaching their own kids about things. Yeah. And, this could take years, right? Yeah. <laughs> Though, you know, maybe never, to be totally honest, because... Do you think it'll fizzle out? Well, I think that, you know, like if you think about the speeches kids give at their high school graduation or college graduation, they hardly ever talk about their grade school teachers. And if they do, it's very lightly. They just mention them by name. But mm -hmm. our memories aren't super great of when we're six and seven and eight, you know. Well, it's hard to understand stand the impact of a certain individual teacher, especially in grade school, mm -hmm. um, just because it is such almost like standard knowledge that somebody would have that you would need to have. And yet you may have learned it that much better because of this teacher. Yeah. You, you may have learned extra things to help you, especially with this piece. Uh, would you do in a piece circle? Is that how you describe it? Yeah. Okay. It's just our mode for teaching. Ideas of peace, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, and so maybe they haven't really understood the effect at the time they're giving their high school graduation speech. Right. 
I kind of feel like part of me thinks like I wonder if I put myself out there a little bit more and I were to run for office or something, I wonder if a couple of them might come out of the woodwork and say, oh, I'll help you with your campaign or I'll help you with this or that a little bit, you know. And then that influence right there would be very meaningful to me. Yeah, I think that's probably a high possibility, especially with, um, I mean, some of your students may have studied things that could help you along your way. Yeah, yeah, they would be able to teach me a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. but it's really important to me. Um, I think like what we've talked about in other podcasts that my religious and spiritual beliefs are pretty limited. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the right phrasing, but if you don't... I think, and maybe this is a topic for another day, but I think there's something there with you. You do have some sort of connection. And we've talked about it before, but there is a connection with you and nature. Yeah, 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 for sure. And perhaps maybe not the stereotypical religious spirit mm -hmm. thing that we've all kind of know it's there or um, have been taught by other people that, yeah, I believe it's there. Yeah. yeah. It may be just a little bit different, but I think there is some sort of connection. Maybe. I mean, I'm trying to keep an open mind my whole life and be open to everything for sure. But I, like I was saying, like I feel an urgency with legacy. Mm -hmm. Like with everything in life, I'm feeling more and more urgency. And so creating a legacy is really important to me for sure. But I mean, I, I don't know if it is to most people. Haven't you known plenty of people that are just like, just want to make enough money that they can retire at 65 and then have their place in Florida and then just kind of grow old there and see their grandkids occasionally and then they die. And yes. that seems like what they're, I don't know if they're happy with it, but they're sort of content with that. It's um, very much within their comfort zone. and Maybe they get anxious when they step out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't really thought outside of their comfort zone what effect they, that individual can actually have. You as yourself, what effect can you have on the outside world and what, um, I guess, problems are you causing by not taking action on your own skills? Yeah. Like, what are you doing just sitting there when you have your own talents that could create this legacy for you as well as I mean, this legacy by definition, is going to help other people. It's going to um, inspire others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, to me, that sounds kind of just sad to, to think about people. I mean, it's good to be content day to day and with your family and everything yeah. like that. But also, but I still feel sad about that. Like, I think people should have aspirations, goals ambition to really impact the world for in a better way I mean I guess I don't know I mean the more the better <laughs> I feel like mm -hmm. um, because you, you can still have an impact with your um, just because this is brought up you know, still an impact with your career right you you, yeah. you climb the career ladder and um, but it's probably the choices that you make well, the day-to-day -day choices that you make could have a legacy mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, there are so, so you have this like standardized life planned out for yourself. Mm -hmm. There are these little things you could do. Right, right. There are right good lifestyle choices, sort of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't. I just don't see too many people making sort of divergent decisions like being willing to step outside I, some people but basic i mean it's like huge it's like 96 or 7 percent of people i feel like are very um you know where this podcast is in the u.s are mostly just willing to just go down all these standard ways of you know go to college get married have kids the path have your been laid out for you yeah you're petting the cat with the fur and not against it yep yeah, but I mean, I, get, I don't know, is it okay if everybody's just, see the thing is, is like, as a species, we're, we're kind of um, parasites, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and so like, we have to do more than just be, 
in a way. We can't just be and consume things and drive around in our cars and grow old and, you know, consume, consume, and then die. That does nothing for the betterment of our society and our species, right? But to better yeah. ourselves as parasites? <laughs> well, I mean, don't we? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, don't we, don't you, do you feel like, I kind of feel like we need to have a bigger calling than just our own lives or even our own families. Like we have to have a, a bigger positive impact than that. Because if we're just sustaining ourselves, then, I mean, that's basically what a dung beetle does. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, that's what I think of legacy. I think a legacy just has an impact that is far greater than our own realm. Pushing the parasite further. <laughs> right, you could argue we're better off to just not help one another as much. So we just try to consume less and you're fine. Well, maybe, maybe if it was, I don't know, because we're still consuming with, with overpopulation, even if we cut it in half, the way that we're growing as a population overall. I think we probably need radical change. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only path I'm seeing, but I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's a good place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all we've got to say about yeah. that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, that grew into something else there, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. There'd be a part two to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting. I know we say this in other episodes, but it'd be interesting to have people comment and mention briefly their legacy. You know, that would be great. Like, I'm working in this field of medicine, and I hope to really help this group of people, or whatever people are doing out there. Yeah, or just, like, I mean, think about your day-to-day, -day and how is that supporting uh, a legacy for you? Yeah, even within a family. Like, how are your great-grandchildren hear about you what will the family stories be will there be a written narrative maybe a little bit mm -hmm. what will be sort of their image of you what is the story that's being passed down about you yeah that's a lot of pressure but it's... everybody we got to do good <laughs> <laughs> don't mess this up <laughs> your legacy is you've been to jail a couple times <laughs> right yeah 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 okay yeah well as always Thank you to our executive producer, Schmidt. Yep, and all the team of people supporting us and, um, and you know, off scenes, but also on YouTube and elsewhere and all sorts of ways that we're getting support. We really appreciate it. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.